so guys, I uh, felt compelled to make a video today about this feature here of copying and pasting interactions and conditions in Maxime Begwin's Advanced Seema. Uh, I heard him mention it maybe a few weeks ago about it being available and thought, oh, it sounds really cool. Didn't do anything with it until I really had a need for it today. Uh, I'm actually going on holiday uh, this weekend for two weeks overseas. Um, so I shouldn't be sitting on the computer right now, but uh, I just felt like I needed to to make this because it's such a cool feature. And where I've decided to use it is, uh, you know, you get all these websites where people like animation, they like things moving. Uh, that's not my typical style. I tend to make things more static, more functional. Uh, if there's a bit of movement, it's when people interact with it, not just because they visited the page or scrolled. Um, so... I wanted to look at how I could do that without too much effort. And this made my life super easy. I'm going to show you how. So the first thing I've got to talk about, though, is I'm going to use the Bricks built-in interactions for animations. And in my view, they are way over the top. They are too much for what I would like to have for an animation. So I actually did a separate video on this a little while ago. And what I'm doing is overriding some of the Bricks animations. Uh, with my own. So uh, because I'm using WP Codebox and be with the current limitations of this, there is no way I can get my CSS to load after the Bricks animation CSS. I have to use prefixes on these keyframes. So I've done WPE underscore, then copied the keyframes from Bricks, uh, and then I override the uh, Bricks class that it applies for those animations and call different keyframes. Um, I had to do this because I can't get this to load after the Bricks Animation CSS um, to override that. So, uh, so that basically all I'm doing in here is in my uh, CSS, I set an animation offset of 30 pixels. By default, these Bricks animations are 100% of the width or height of the object. Uh, and it's just too much in, in my view. So I'm just reducing that animation to 30 pixels. So that's the first thing that I wanted to do. Now, where we use this in the theme setting. So once we've enabled this copy and paste interactions and conditions, we've got a dummy page set up here. So the first thing I did was create a block up here and I just put four icons in there. And on those icons, I've just put an up arrow down left and right. And if we look at each of these, they've got an interaction on them. And the interaction is the end of viewport, start animation, and using the standard bricks animation. So this is fade in up. The other one there is fade in down. The next one is fade in right. Uh, and the naming of this is a little bit uh, wrong. That fades in from the right, which is why it's pointing to the left. And the next one is fade in left, which means it comes from the left to the right. So I've got the arrow pointing in the direction it actually animates in. So I've got these interactions on there. If I refresh this page, uh, go to the front page, you'll see they all animate. So I'll just refresh. They've all animated. If I go out of viewport, back into the viewport, and go far enough out of the viewport, I need more content. Okay, so that's not going to do it for us. Maybe if I put a bit more content here, I'm just going to add some content at the bottom of this Laura Mipsum from, uh, it's not Laura Mipsum, it's a Bob Roth Laura Mipsum. Add some more content so I've got more scroll. And just have a look at this page. Now, yeah, okay, if I scroll out of view, into view, they animate. Okay, and that's just the Bricks animations tamed down to a movement of 30 pixels, not 100% of the block size. Okay, so that's the first bit I've done. Here's where it gets really cool. Now, if I now go down to a create another section using AT, uh, in there I'm going to create a block, and I'm going to give this a name. I'll call this Animate Animate uh, Test. Uh, I'll give that a grid. And inside that grid, I'm just going to put an image in there. And this is all advanced theme, by the way. If I right-click, Class Converter, create my classes, all my BEM classes are created. Go to my grid. I'm going to use actually uh, ACSS variables for this. I'm just doing this very quickly. So I'm going to set that to a grid. Use a grid gap. This is an ACSS variable using autocomplete from AT. 
So they work beautifully together. We're going to make this a grid of four. Uh, where's my grid four? Where's my grid four? So I've got a grid of four, and I've got uh, one image in there at the moment. So I'm going to duplicate that three times. So I've got four images, and I'm just going to grab my first image, change it to something like maybe this bird. Next one, change that to something else. So this cabbage here. What else do we want? Maybe this uh, hills, rolling hills. And then we're going to get a, uh, maybe this house here. Okay, very simple. So because we've used uh, BEM and using AT to create those, uh, and we can use, also use the uh, ACSS BEM create as well. I'm using AT for most of the stuff, so that's, that's why I'm doing that. So if I go to the image, pick that, uh, class make sure the class selected I'm going to set my aspect ratio to one and my object fit to cover and they're all done how simple was that so fast so quick now let's say I want to animate these when they come in and out of the viewport uh, how I would do that is basically go okay I'm going to pick this first one I'm going to go to my uh, interactions and because of advanced SEMA, I've got these two new icons which is copy and import. So I'm just going to hit the copy interactions from that first arrow up, go down to this one, and I'm going to paste that onto there or import it onto that. I'm going to go to the next one, which is a uh, animate down. I'm going to copy that, go to the image, and I'm going to paste that on there. Go to the next one, which animate to the left, copy that, paste that onto that one. And my last one is animating to the right. I'm going to copy that and paste it onto that last one there. Simple as that. I've just done four animations in different directions, which isn't exactly what we want to have on a live site, but um, just by copying and pasting from these little placeholder, I guess you call them, um, and that's done. All right, so let's duplicate that. So actually, let's create a background on that first. I'm going to do a section background. So I'll do a section just to separate this out, I think I've got a section Alt already created. I did, and that just puts a bit of a background on there. I'm going to duplicate that, and on the second one, I'm going to take my section Alt off. Uh, and maybe we'll do this in reverse. Let's go to, so we'll go for that one there. We're going to go to the interaction. We're going to copy. You know, what I would suggest you do is create all your content and then just copy all the stuff you want to animate up just copy that and go to each one of those and just paste them on them so they're going to do that on that one if i'm just going to check it might actually bring both and it did too so i'm going to delete the other one i'm going to delete both and just put that on there it doesn't delete the existing animation so okay i'm going to go to the next one i'm going to copy that go to this one here delete the existing and just import that onto there. So I'm actually going in the opposite direction here. Uh, copy that. This one here. Delete. Just paste that on there. And the last one. Copy that. Go this last one. Delete the one that's there. And add to that. So I've got two separate sections. I've done the reverse of the animations on it. Hit the save. Let's have a look at what that looks like on the front end. So we've got these animations up here. These ones just animated. Okay. We go to the next section and they're up, they're animating in the opposite direction. Okay, there we go. So we just added some interest to this page very, very quickly. And what I would suggest you do is actually create all your content on there. Go, okay, which ones do you want to animate up? Copy from the animate up. Go and paste it onto the ones you want to animate up. Which ones do you want to animate left? Go to the left one, copy that, paste it on the ones you want to animate left, and then your animations are done. And that's really, really simple. Now, this is enough for what most clients would want. Uh, it does not have the GSAP, um, what they call it, scrub, so you can't change an animation depending on what the scroll position is. Um, and you don't have, unfortunately, in bricks here, when you look at your animations here, there's no um, uh, threshold for the top and the bottom. 
So it basically animates as soon as any part of that element enters the viewport. So in this case, I think it's okay. Uh, if you want to wait for it to come in before uh, it gets, maybe after it gets 20% from the top or the bottom, you can't do this. You're going to have to do that manually with your own intersection observer or using GSAP or whatever you're going to use. But I think for a really simple site with simple animation, this works beautifully. And again, um, say for example, we pick that one. Let's say we want to animate that one down. So I'm going to pick the down, copy the interactions, go to that, paste the interactions onto there, save. Now that's animating downwards. Okay, get it out of view, into view, it's animating downwards. How simple is that? You know, a bunch of animations and it's taking me very, very little time. Um, now with the code, see, I think that for me that 30 pixels is enough, right? I think too much is too much. Let's go back to the code box and let's make that say uh, 200 pixels, right? And see how horrible this looks. Yeah, let's say this, refresh. Look at that. That's just too much. That's typically what you're going to get from if you just do this straight away in uh, bricks. Looks like I messed up on these two because they're both going down. Um, when I paste it onto those, it's okay. All right, so if we go back here, we make it 10 pixels. 10 pixels. That might be just too small. Back here, refresh. Just a tiny bit of animation. Look at that. Just a little bit of interest as it comes in. I quite like that actually. I quite like having that tiny bit, not too much, but 30 is okay. Let's go back to 30, see what that's like. Right, that's not too bad. Okay, so there we go. I reckon it's cool. I think the fact that we can just copy and paste uh, interactions and conditions from one element to the other, just a yet another enormous time saver that AT delivers. Um, apart from all these shortcuts and all the other features of it, this is just really added to my view that AT is just indispensable if you're working with bricks. I love it. Uh, I hope you do. And uh, I'm going to leave it here and go and have a holiday. So enjoy. Thanks for listening.